Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. So, if you've been following the channel, uh, you know that I ordered and have received the Celestron Edge HD 8. Uh, there were a couple of items that I needed before I could get started uh, building out uh, the rig and getting it dialed in, getting the back focus, uh, and those type of things going. Um, I think uh, the last piece that I need is in this box. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to make mention if you're a electrification or electric vehicle fan, uh, Lori and I are going to be producing some content on our Lori and Bill Retired channel. Uh, we ordered a, an EV. Uh, we subsequently changed the order and moved to a different EV. But anyway, that uh, content will show up on uh, Lori and Bill Retired if you're interested in it. And we should receive our electric vehicle, our first electric vehicle in the uh, January uh, 2023 timeframe. Okay, so back on to uh, astrophotography. So uh, let's see what's in the box. And I hope it is what I hope it is. Oh, I don't know if this is it. But maybe this is it. Yeah, I guess this is it. This is the ZWO uh, ASI 174 Mini. Okay, so uh, as you know, in my Celestron um, Edge HD uh, configuration, I am going to use an OAG, and uh, my understanding is currently this is a good camera uh, to pair with the uh, prism size in the Celestron OAG that I purchased. Originally, I had purchased the ZWO uh, OAG, and after a lot of, uh, or some viewer feedback, I made a decision to cancel that order on the ZWO OAG, and I purchased the more expensive Celestron uh, OAG. So uh, this should pair well with that. And then the other uh, thing that's in the box is just a, a top rail. So. I've kind of got mixed emotions in that now that I have everything I need, it's time to get started building out that configuration and putting it into service. Um, I've got a couple of considerations yet that I have to uh, handle. Uh, one of them is I have the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advanced. It's currently on my Xenostar 61. Uh, Z61 Mod 2 configuration, so I am going to need some type of solution, and uh, also I only have one filter wheel right now, so I've got to make some decisions. I think I'm going to cannibalize my Xenostar Z61. Uh, I'm going to move over uh, the filter wheel uh, with its filters. I am going to move over the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance. So now that leaves me a void on my Xenostar configuration. And um, I just checked stock on the ASI Air Plus. I think that's the direction I'm going to go with the uh, Xenostar uh, Z61. And um, with that, uh, I'll need to get a filter drawer of some sort for a 1.25 uh, mounted filters and I'm going to pair my ASI uh, 533 uh, MC Pro camera with my Xenostar going forward. Um, yes, the one inch square sensor uh, is maybe sm smaller compared to my ASI 294, but I've already uh, demonstrated that I can collect a mosaic data and build a mosaic in uh, in uh, PixInsight, so I think I'm good there. And then that enables me to move the Pocket Power Box Advance over to the Edge uh, 8 HD. I'll use my ZWO 8 position filter wheel 
I'll use my ASI 294MM Pro uh, monochrome camera for the Edge HD configuration. Uh, I just need to sell something because uh, I'm out of money uh, in order to get the ASI Air Pro. And also it seems they're on back order and you know, maybe an October delivery. So I've got to sort all that thing, all those uh, decisions out. Also here in Northern California, we have a lot of forest fires, unfortunately right now. So, you know, we'll just have to see uh, how much time I can get to uh, start to dial in my Edge HD. Definitely during the daytime, I can work on focus and setting some backspacing and those type of things, I think. Uh, but um, I'll make all that happen. Uh, also, I feel like I'm really beginning again. Uh, and in a sense I am because it's a new uh, configuration. It's a much longer focal length. But I feel comfortable because I spent a year and a half with the wide field uh, telescope that I picked up a lot of the basics on uh, guiding and uh, other aspects of uh, collecting uh, astronomical uh, data that I've got a pretty good footing underneath me. So now it's learning the nuances of working with much longer focal lengths where you have to be better with your guiding. And fortunately I have the uh, H, uh, I've got the, uh, <laughs> I can't even remember the model number of the uh, larger, uh, uh, Skywatcher HQ6R uh, Pro or whatever. And uh, so, you know, but it's time to get started. I feel like kind of a beginner again. Um, but again, this is all fun. So, all right, I just wanted to update you. I also have to make some decisions. I'm going to Nightfall, which is an event that they hold down in Borrego Springs at the end of October. If anyone happens to be going uh, with it, please let me know in the comments. Maybe we can meet up. Uh, the Riverside Astronomical Society is a major uh, driver in putting that event together. It should be fun. I went to it last year, and that's why I wanted to go uh, this year. And uh, looking forward to that. And um, I got my work cut out um, ahead of me uh, to get the Edge HD uh, configuration ready for service so I can use it uh, at nightfall. I'll also be traveling with my uh, Xenostar Z61. I'll have two mounts I think and so if I run into some trouble with the Edge HD I'll still be able to uh, use my Xenostar on my HEQ5 Pro mount and so this is my current thinking but if you have any suggestions put it in the comments below uh, if you think I'm going in the right direction, getting an ASI Air Pro uh, to use with my Xenostar Z61, let me know. If you think I'm not going in the right direction, let me know that as well. If there's a better uh, combination of things I should be doing, uh, let me know. So I got my hands full. Hopefully uh, these forest fires uh, are eventually put out here in uh, Northern California. I understand there's also some forest fires in the south of California as well. So a lot of challenges, but these are typical for this time of the year in Northern California. All right, I just wanted to give you an update of where I'm at and the clock is starting today in getting my Edge HD configuration up and running and uh, wish me some luck. And hopefully uh, by October, uh, Borrego Springs um, actually have a good configuration where I can start collecting data and uh, seeing what issues I run into with these longer uh, focal lengths. And I am kind of excited about getting an ASI Air Plus. Um, so many of you recommended that as a solution and now I see an opportunity to spend the $299 and uh, actually start to learn about it and use it with my Xenostar Z61. So, um, you know, we'll see where it goes. Again, I want to thank you for dropping into the channel. Also want to thank all the subscribers for hitting uh, that subscribe button. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you might want to hit the notification bell and give it a thumbs up. Thumbs ups are very important to this channel. It helps give visibility to the videos. And uh, I also got a couple of more videos coming up. One thing, uh, I'm going to do a video on some of the artifacts I'm seeing in my images since I moved to dither every three frames 
Uh, I've done that on two outings so far, and I'm seeing the screen door effect. I'm going to do a video on that. And I have also got a, a couple of ideas uh, for videos that I'll be putting together over the next several weeks. But clearly my focus now is getting the Edge uh, HD8 up and into service. Okay, if, again, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Other than that, uh, wish you clear skies wherever you may be in the world. Till next time.